Now, what if we want to access a particular element from a list? How do we do that? And this brings us to the topic of indexing. And to do this, we simply write the list followed by square brackets in which we provide an integer. And it's really any expression that evaluates to an integer. And that gives the offset from the first element in the list. So here's an example. Let's go with x list is equal to, and just to keep this simple and clear, let's have the string a, the string b, the string c, the string d, and one more e. Now, if we want the first element of this list, we just write the list identifier followed by brackets in which we write the index 0, or anything that evaluates to 0. That 0 means don't offset at all from the start of the list, just give us the first element of the list. If we wrote x list with an index of 1, that means offset 1 from the start of the list. And we get b. If we ask for the length of this list, well, there are five elements in this list. What if we wanted the last element of this list? We could write x list and 4. That should give us the fifth element, which is e. But that's not general. Let's try and come up with a general expression for the last element of a list. And if we wrote x list, and how about what's the length of x list? Well, that's 5, but the last element has an index that's one less than the total length of the list. And there we get the same thing. If we wrote x list with an index of 5, that's beyond the end of the list. And we'll get an error here. And sure enough, it says list index is out of range. We can access an element of a literal list, such as the list consisting of the integers 97, 52, maybe 87, and minus 13. That's the list. And if we wrote now bracket 2, close bracket, that's the index picking out an element from this list. And hitting return, we should see 87. Now, we could also access an element of a list that's returned by a function. And to demonstrate this, let's use the built-in function list. This function tries to convert its argument into a list. And to demonstrate this, we could give it a string such as hello. And this returns a list where all the elements are the individual characters of the string that was provided as an argument. So I'll recall that command. And let's say we wanted the fifth element from that list. So that's offset 4 from the beginning. And there we get the O. Now let's return to the x list list that we had before. And as a reminder, there it is. And let's assume we want to create a string consisting of all the strings within xList. We want to concatenate them all together. And here's something we could do. Let's start with a string accumulator. So this is a string variable that's currently just the empty string. And now let's use a for loop to cycle through xList. And let's concatenate each element of xList to our accumulator. We could say for i in, and let's give a list with all the indices of xList. So there's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the header of our for loop. And now we'll take our accumulator and add to it the element xList with an index of i. And then we assign that back to the accumulator. OK, we'll hit return twice. And now, what is s? It's the string that has been formed by concatenating all the strings from within xList. Now, notice the way we constructed this for loop. As the iterable in the header, we explicitly listed every one of the valid indices of xList. And xList is fairly short, so that's no big deal. But what if we had a list of a 1,000 elements or a million elements? Then clearly, we don't want to have to do that. 
Now in the next video we'll see that there's a much better way of generating all the indices for a list. A function called range will come to our rescue. But before getting to that, I want to discuss a few things that are related to what we've just done. One is that when we add two numbers, it doesn't matter the order of the operands. We could add 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1 and we get the same thing. But when we concatenate strings, order definitely matters. So let's demonstrate this. Let's recall that initialization of our string accumulator to the empty string. Recall our for loop, but now let's switch the order of the operands for this concatenation. Let's have the element coming from xlist concatenated to our string accumulator. And if we do things this way, s is now the concatenation of all the elements from xlist, but they're in reverse order. Rather than dwell on this, if it's not clear to you why this is the case. I'll let you think about that on your own. I also want to point out that there is a cleaner way of doing this. We could initialize our accumulator to the empty string and then instead of using explicit indexing here we could have said for let's say ch as in character since these strings are just a single character for ch in xlist that's our iterable what we could do is say s you are equal to whatever character or string came from xlist concatenated to the beginning of the current value of the accumulator. And if we do this, s is now, again, the reverse characters from xlist. Okay, we'll call it quits there, and in the next video we'll consider the range function.